Hello and welcome. Today we're going to review what we did the other day, but in doing it a different way. So the other day I showed you how to pull down uh, all the files from a website in HAR file, which is a HTTP archive file, and then extract the base64, convert it, get the images you want, put them into a PDF. And we did that for a yearbook from classmates.com. Now, if you go to classmates.com, you can create an account, you can go in there, and if you go to a yearbook that they have scanned, that people have scanned and uploaded, you can try right-clicking and you can't get a page. What I should have shown you in the first video is again I'm in Chrome but most web browsers have a developers panel uh, usually it's F12 if you don't have an F12 in Chrome uh, control shift I to open that up we're gonna go to the networks tab and then we'll refresh this page I also have it clicked on images so it's only gonna list images down here but any image that loads on this page will appear down here and as I click through here and more pages load you can see them loading down here I can right or I can left click on here I can see a preview of that and if I want that image now I can right click and say save that image if you only need one image from the page, that's fine. Again, uh, they, they have must have an invisible layer or something over here that prevents you from clicking on this image or something in JavaScript that prevents you, but it's still loading down here. Now, in the last video, I showed you how to, again, pull everything down in an HRA file, which is great. It makes it very simple if you have a page you have to log into to access the stuff. But I noticed uh, if I right click this and I say uh, copy image URL and then I open up an incognito, uh, incognito, incognito mode or a private uh, uh, tab, uh, which in Chrome is control shift N. And of course I'm gonna have to do this. And now I paste in that URL. I can load that image. That means we can download these images without having to go through credentials and log in, which you can do from the shell. There's different ways, you know, curl and wget both allow for uh, login information. Um, but uh, we're trying to keep this simple, and that makes it very simple that I don't have to log in if I have a direct link to this image. Now, I don't know how long that link, if it expires at some point, but if I was to go into a folder such as this, say wget, put in that uh, URL for that image, and download it, you can see that it appears here. I can open that up, and, and there's that image right there downloaded. Uh, you notice that it does give that full name after that. Uh, so there's more after the .jpg, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. We're gonna remove that with a script. We still need to get a list of all of these. So I'm just going to move that to trash for now. So again, I'm in a empty directory here. This is my shell up here. This is the same directory down here, just so you can see as things load. I'm gonna go back to my web browser and just like last time, and again, you can fully automate this for sure, uh, but we're going to just assume that you're going to only download a few of these. So writing out a full script to automate the entire thing is um, overkill. Again, if you're gonna be downloading hundreds of these yearbooks, you're gonna to wanna to fully automate the system. But all I have to do now, just like last time, is I can go through here and I can click through and just allow each page to load. And as I flip it through each page, you'll notice down in the developers tab on my network tab here, you can see the pages loading. That's right down here, okay? So as I go, you can see them loading. And again, these uh, yearbooks are scanned by users. So it even has signatures and messages from uh, the people in the class who signed their yearbooks, which is just adds to the uh, coolness of it, if you ask me. Uh, we're gonna go all the way through. Looks like we're getting to the end. I could go faster, but I just wanna make sure every page loads, like that page almost didn't load. And because it loaded a little late, uh, there's a possibility when I download these and convert to PDF, it might end up in the wrong um, order. It might be out of order when we get to that page. And of course we could uh, write our script to look out for that. Oh, make sure that page loaded, okay. And we're at the end now. Now last time we right clicked and we said save all as HR and that will save all these images and everything that's loaded into one large file. We're not gonna do that this time. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go copy and we could do copy as curl, but these are binary things and it's gonna give you, that'll give you a list of curl commands to download everything, but uh, the binary stuff is, such as images, is not gonna load properly. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna say copy all as HIR, but that's not with content. So I copied that, it's in my clipboard now. Now I can open up a text editor and put that into a text file. I'm just gonna use cat, I'm gonna cat and put it into a file called uh, 1.har, name of the file does not matter. Now I can uh, control shift V to paste that. It'll take a minute to paste it all in there. Once that pa is pasted, all I have to do is hit Control D and it will be now saved to that file. So I'm basically just catting all this information that I'm pasting into the shell here. It is a lot. And now, like I said last time we had all the images as base64, we had to find that information, pull it out. But what I can do now is I can say grep 
JPEG and I can grep that file for JPEGs and you can see a list of them here and these look like the right ones. We can see here that it says yearbook and we can see a page number but just to make sure you know we're not grabbing other JPEGs I'm now going to grep that again just say yearbook, yearbooks and hopefully now I can double check but I'm just going to assume that these images that I'm grabbing now are URLs just to pages in the yearbook. So at this point, I want to cut out the excess information. You can see that this is, we have quotation marks here. So I'm going to say, this is column one over here, two, three, and this will be column four if we divide this up by quotation marks. So we will say cut with a delimiter of quotation marks, field four, and when we do that, we will get a list of all the images. We can now pipe this into wget, but again, we would get all these, um, uh, question marks at the end there. I'm sure there's a clean, easy way to remove all those. I'm just going to renumber all the pages. So what I'm going to do is here is I'm going to say let x equal uh, 1000. And what that's saying is uh, I'm creating a variable called x and that's an integer. It's a number, a whole number. And now I can say w get, uh, or I want to do while loop while and there's actually other ways to do this that I've shown in the past where you can um, run things in parallel so it's downloading more than one image at a time which is something you might want to look into but I'm going to say read and I'll say URL then I'll say do wget dollar sign uh, URL and I'll explain this in a moment uh, dash capital O for wget most programs it's lowercase o wget it's capital O if you don't do that it's going to uh, yeah, do weird things. And we're gonna say dollar sign x dot jpeg, and then we'll say colon let oops, let x plus plus done. So what are we doing here? Again, we're starting our script or our command here, our one liner, and we're saying create a variable called x set it to 1000 as an integer. Let is saying it's an integer, so we can add to it. We're gonna say look at this HRA file, find all the lines that say JPEG and yearbook, and then we're gonna cut those out and get this list, and then we're gonna look through this while read. We're gonna loop through this line by line, and what are we going to do? Well, we're gonna create a variable called URL for each of those lines, and we're gonna say wget download that URL. So download each one of these lines. We're gonna say the output uh, will be, again, if we don't give it an output, it's gonna output it with this full name, which is not the end of the world, uh, but then you'd wanna clean that up after that. We're gonna output it to dollar sign JPEG, which will be 1000.jpg, but then it will add one to JPEG. So the next time it loops around, it'll be 1001, 1002. And that was just, it's an easy way to name these files, keep them in order without having to put placeholder zeros. I've shown how to do that before. This is just a quick and easy way. Obviously there's lots of ways to do what we're doing right now. And some might be better than others. This is just, in my mind, the quickest way that I've come up with for doing this that I remember. That I know there are commands that can clean this up a little bit, but I don't use them regularly, so they're not in my head. And there's like 240 some pages for this, and as you can see, they were downloading. We're at 180, 190, So again, the only reason we're able to do this is because we've acknowledged that these images don't need a login. If you needed to log in to view the images, we would have to create login credentials and all that. This is just, if that's the case, then I would go with the other route that I showed in the previous video where we just bulk download things to one file and extract it from there. So again, now I can click on any one of these pages and I can look through the pages as images. And if I want to, if I have image magic installed, which you should, when I say you should, it's not, it's fairly commonly installed. And if not, you should have it installed because it's such a useful tool. We're just going to say convert all these JPEGs to, this is Naples High Yearbook. I think this was 1973.pdf. And with that, without giving any parameters, it's basically going to put all of these JPEGs into the PDF. I don't think it's going to recompress them at all. Uh, so, it should be, let's see, we have all together, let's do it up here, we'll say du-h, we can see that there's a 157, so if you count the images and the PDF, it's 157 megs, and if we were to list whoops, out our yearbook, it should be about half that, which it is, so there you go, and now we can 
XDG dash open XDG will use whatever default application you have set for PDFs to open this. And there you go, there's page one, and we can now go through all these pages. This is our PDF of our yearbook. And I'm pretty sure we got most of the pages. Yep, that goes in order there. And that's it. Now you can save this, upload it, do whatever you want with it. You have individual images and PDFs for your liking. So similar to what we did before, but instead of downloading everything to one file through the browser and then extracting the images out of it, we basically downloaded a list of the images and then downloaded those separately. Two different ways to do it. Again, this is a better way, I think, if the, if uh, since we don't need login credentials to actually pull the images. If you tried to, again, click on this and say, open a new tab and it wouldn't, or and you did this in incognito mode and it wouldn't load, that means you have to log in to access that image. In that case, I would go the route we went in the other video. Again, there's lots of different ways to do things depending on the scenarios. I hope you found this useful. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There's a link in the description. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.